So you're thinking about building a small solar system, maybe for a shed or a camper or an RV or maybe just for emergencies? What a coincidence, so am I. Let's go figure it out together. So let's say that you really don't need the portability of something like one of these power stations here, these portable power stations. Maybe you want something more permanent mounted, either in an RV or a van, or maybe a shed. Let's say you want to build your own solar generator system that can grow with you. Well, you're going to need a few basic components to start, and that's what we're going to do. So first of all, you're going to need a way to store your power, so you're going to start with a battery. So the system we're going to build together here is a, I would call it a small system that's expandable. I'm going to use a 100 amp hour battery. And some of these components were given to me, like if your time did provide this battery for me, this uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. And then Blue RV provided the charge controller, because you're going to need a way to get the power from the solar panels into the battery. So that's where the charge controller comes into play. So we don't just want to store power, right? We want to be able to use it too. So we need an AC inverter. So I bought this particular inverter with my own money. Amazon because I wanted to do this video and I didn't have all the pieces that I needed. Uh, so I needed more than just the battery and the charge controller. So this is a 2,000 watt pure sine wave uh, inverter. So it handles 2,000 watts continuous and up to 4,000 watts peak. Now that's probably overkill for what we're going to be using here. It's probably at least double what I really need. But again, I'm wanting to build a system that I can easily expand. So I'm going to have the components in place that all I need to do if I want to expand this is add another battery and and then add another solar panel or two. And then I instantly got a significantly larger capacity system. So this is going to be a great sort of entry level size, a starter size, if you will, uh, for a solar generator. Something that would be appropriate for uh, a little small workshop shed if you want to be able to power lights and fans and that kind of thing. This would be absolutely uh, more than adequate for something like this. You could actually power some power tools for reasonable periods of time with this size system as well. But, so what else do we need? Now all these other items I'm going to show you, these are all things that I bought with my own money. So again, the only things that I've actually been uh, sponsored with for this video are the charge controller and the battery. So uh, I did buy some, this is an 8 gauge battery cable from Amazon. This will allow me to go from the charge controller uh, to the battery. I do want to add the capability to use DC power directly instead of not just AC power. So I picked this up off of Amazon. This is kind of cool. It's got an on-off switch. Uh, it's got a little volt meter, so I can see how much uh, volts this thing is currently drawing. And then it's got a couple of uh, low power uh, type C USB ports. And then a 12 volt uh, socket here so that I can uh, power a 12 volt refrigerator off that if I want to. So that's going to be cool. I've not actually done one of these before, but this is going to be fun. This is just a box of miscellaneous wire tie down. So once we get this all set up, we're going to want to clean up the install. So since I'm going to be doing some cutting and crimping of cables, I bought myself a decent quality uh, crimper. That's obviously optional depending on whether or not you need to crimp your cables. I want to keep my cable runs nice and short for maximum efficiency. So I figured I might as well go ahead and get a crimper while I'm at it. Got a, a wire stripper. Now this is designed for heavier gauge wire. So that'll be handy. Uh, wire cutter. So this is just some wire snips. I always look at these kinds of videos as an opportunity for me to buy new tools. So, okay. miscellaneous uh, copper connectors and, uh, and shrink tubes. So, heat shrink tubes. So, these are going to be ways when I'm making uh, cable connections that I can uh, terminate properly with a proper sized uh, connector, terminal connector, and then make sure that it's uh, properly covered with heat shrink so it doesn't contact something unnecessarily or unexpectedly. Now, to protect your devices and, and reduce the risk of something like fire uh, and for unexpected circumstances, uh, you're going to want a fuse or a circuit breaker. Now, something like this, this is a 200 amp fuse, and you normally position this between the positive uh, terminal on the battery and the positive terminal on the inverter. Now, another way to do to go about that, so I'm probably not actually going to use that fuse. Instead, I've got a 200 amp uh, waterproof uh, breaker. So. This is going to enable me to basically very easily disable power to the battery from the inverter and vice versa uh, if I want to do some work so I don't have to disconnect cables. I can just simply trip the breaker and disconnect power. And then between the battery and the charge controller, I've got a 50 amp breaker. So other than some miscellaneous wires and connectors, 
that's about it. Obviously, a little piece of plywood that I can mount all this on. So now that I've got all this laid out and kind of got an idea of what the various pieces and parts are, and by the way, I'll put links to these uh, pieces in the, in the description of the video if you're interested in seeing uh, what they are and how much they cost. But let's go to a workspace where I can spread out and actually uh, start uh, laying out the parts on the board and figure out where I'm going to put everything. So let's go do that and we'll just kind of figure out how all this works together. Alright, I've got my 2x2 two two plywood laid out here. It's just uh, basically half inch thick plywood. And I need to figure out how I want to arrange my uh, inverter and my charge controller. And I've got a couple of these breakers here. This breaker obviously is going to sit between the charge controller and the inverter. And then this breaker down here is going to sit between the inverter and the battery. And then I also need to figure out where I'm going to put my uh, 12 volt uh, accessory ports here. So I think I'm going to just put those right down here. And I'm going to just basically take these things out and use this uh, little face plate as a guide to drill the holes where I can drill right into the plywood. Now it looks like I've got a lot of extra space here on the left. So I think I'm just going to draw a quick line here. And then I'm going to uh, rip down this board so that I don't have all this extra space on the side that I don't really need. Tenía que dar comercial.
just got to read my wire information. So this is the fuses are going to be always on the positive red wire. So I'm going to be taping pieces that are going. This is going to go with the bottom of this fuse, and this is going to go directly to the battery. So I need to also take the positive here, the positive on the inverter, and the positive on the inverter to the positive on this 50 amp fuse, and then over here the positive up to the charge controller. So these will all be red wires. And then the black of common wire, the smaller one, I'm going to need to uh, cut this to fit from here over to the common on the inverter. And then I've got the main, obviously the main battery cable is going to come down uh, from, the, from the common on the, or the negative on the inverter and go straight to the battery. So um, the only other thing uh, is these little DC connections. So um, I did drill the holes as you can see, so that actually worked out really, really cool. Um, the only thing is, is that it didn't occur to me the width of this half inch drywall or uh, half inch plywood is going to be a problem. I'm not going to be able to use the little the retaining ring on the bottom side of the drywall to cinch this particular little bolt meter down. There's not going to be enough thread sticking out to do that. So I think the solution there for me, um, instead of just trying to drill a bigger hole, which will be a little bit of a challenge without a drill press, is I'm just going to actually put some super glue around this little flange. And then just super glue this into place uh, once I once I get it where I want it. So I think that's going to be the easy, easiest solution there. Um, everything around it's going to be cinched down, and then the faceplate itself is going to be screwed into the the panel. So that's going to look nice when I get it all set up. Now, before I uh, go ahead and get my cable terminations all set up, I wanted to go ahead and directly wire the uh, battery to the inverter without the fuses. Uh, just so I can test the inverter, since I this is a brand new inverter and I've not tested it before. Gonna get this plastic off of there. A little shiny and new. Kind of wanted to see what the display looks like, so let's turn this thing on, and hopefully we don't see any sparks. Cool. So this is actually a color display. We've got 13 volts DC in. We're outputting uh, 111 volts out of this, so I can hook appliances up to this right now and actually run them. So that's pretty neat. All right, I got a floor fan here. Let me just kind of plug this in. See if it fires up. Yep, assuming you can hear that. Actually, right over there. All right, so we know the inverter works. So I'm going to go ahead and take these wires back off and then go ahead and do the wire terminations as I had originally planned it. I ended up having to, to super glue this, and so I went and you know and bought some of this Loctite uh, super glue gel. It's supposed to dry clear, uh, but it didn't. It, it dried kind of white, chalky, hazy. I got some of it off. I probably used too much. Maybe that was my problem. Take a quick look at the back of the panel here. These are the DC ports that I had mounted, and these came as all one block, by the way, and they're you know attached to one single faceplate. And each one is, is held by these retaining rings. You can see where the
So that's how we follow that and it's just very straightforward. Um, it's very, very clear that uh, the thing that we just said over the last clipper and uh, the main essential clipper, terminal clipper, so we set that up. And then all of that's not the, uh, the cause of whether we're cutting from the DC nozzle up to this little hole right here and the black column is going to the uh, diameter of that column on the uh, inverter and then the red is going to the uh, this side of the positive and then the hit the end. So all I really need to do is to energize this breaker here uh, in order to see if we get some power. Okay, that's cool. We got 13.1 volts. That gets those uh, inverter power. Okay, the inverter is showing 13.0 volts. Let's go ahead and energize the charge control in order to turn it on. That's cool. We need 13.2 volts. So we got 13.2, 13.1, and 13.0. So this is where it's kind of interesting to see or take our multimeter here. Let's go to reality check on that. 13.08 volts. So we are just ahead of 13.1, which is obviously has a uh, precision of one tenth, so it's a down amp. So this is actually fairly precise. Um, this is also a lot of times what's happening down and down. So if you look at between the inverter and the charge controller, 13.2, 13.0, I'm actually kind of right in the middle of these two values. This is slightly higher, this is slightly lower, and this one is actually pretty much right on the, on the edge. It's pretty humble. Um, right on the money. But anyway, I think that's all the jamming we can do tonight. So uh, it's been some dark out. We have to wait till tomorrow and hopefully get some decent sun. I'm going to hook up some solar panels and uh, get this thing charging. All right, got some nice modern stuff. And I'm going to put in power into the solar generator here. So I am plugging my Olympic Mama into the inside of the battery. Let's launch the uh, Charge Pro. Charge Pro 2.0. This is the app that you can use to Bluetooth monitor the Bouge RV charge control. I already got my Bluetooth connection established here. And we are getting 125, 124 watts per amp into the, uh, into the battery right now at 9.4 amps. And my battery voltage is 13.5. Temperature time gives you a really nice little matrix that shows you the state of charge based upon the battery voltage. And you can see here at the top of the list, so 13.5, I am roughly at 100%, approximately at 100%. So these numbers are all approximations, they're not exact numbers. Let's do some testing here. Let's actually put an AC load on the inverter and see if we can uh, find out how, you know, how it reacts when we start actually drawing some significant wattage out of this thing. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn on the air dryer here. I'm going to put it on warm heat and low. Just the thing that I'm not super confident about. I have got here my one of my 12 volt refrigerators, and uh, it's currently off, as you can see. So I'm not 100 percent sure that the fuses that are attached on these uh, the, that came with the wiring, these little sensors, and that's these guys right here. I don't know what size fuses those are. I can figure that out from the uh, product spec. I didn't take the little assembly apart to look. So we're gonna find out if I blow a fuse. <laughs> so if the thing that blows out, uh, we'll know because there's one main uh, positive wire here with a fuse feeding the power connector here. So if this fuse blows, everything else is dead. So what we're gonna do is turn that off. And plug this in to the socket. And we're gonna find out if I can power the refrigerator or not. So let's turn this on. All right, and, all right, actually, we're good. You can see that's the internal temperature now. So the compressor is actually running. It's a very quiet unit. This is the new Air 48 port. So, cool, that works. I am powering the fridge uh, off 
off of this uh, AC or off of this little DC module here. I wasn't sure if this bridge was going to pull too much power. So clearly, it did well. So that's that's excellent. I'm really happy with this setup. As I mentioned originally, I kind of designed this so that I could expand this at some point if I wanted to. I already have 2,000 watt continuous 4,000 watt uh, inverter. And so it'd be very easy for me to add just a second battery. So if you're curious what this 100 amp hour equates to in terms of watt hours, like a lot of portable power stations are rated at, just multiply 12 times 100 amp hours and you get watt hours. So 1200 watt hours is the rated capacity for this battery. So I could add another uh, 100 amp hour battery and I would get 2400 watt hours of capacity with the second battery. I wouldn't need to change the sign of the, uh, the inverter. I really wouldn't need to change anything because if I put the battery in parallel, um, I'm simply going to maintain uh, 12 volts and then my um, charge control absolutely can handle another 200 watts of input easily since this is a 40 amp charge control. The uh, 40 amp actually refers to the uh, output capacity so it can max out at 40 amps uh, in terms of sending uh, current to the battery. But easily you can handle uh, a couple of 200 watt panels with this, no problem at all. In fact, you can handle a uh, fair amount more than that. So hopefully you got the sense that this is actually a very doable project and something you can definitely handle if you just take your time and do a little bit of research to make sure that you've got your wires gauged properly so that whatever system you end up setting up is safe to operate. Um, I will be going into some more uh, information on another video on the Ampere Time. 100 amp hour battery and also another video that will be more specific to the uh, charge controller from Bouge RV, the 40 amp charge controller right there. I'm going to get into the, uh, the app and kind of the configuration options and talk a little bit more about what you can do with that charge controller because it's very cool. And of course I've got the AC inverter. There was really not any configuration options on the AC inverter um, other than the, you know, the remote control which I think I showed you when I was doing some of the other little bits and pieces. But, we didn't really need the remote control in this setup, but it's really great if you're actually setting up a shed uh, system or an RV system, something like that, then uh, this is going to be kind of tucked away out, out of reach, and it would be nice to have that remote control, which uh, it does come with a pretty long cable for that. So it's pretty handy, and as I mentioned, I'll put uh, links to all this stuff in the description below if you want to go check out and see how much this stuff costs, and then uh, you know maybe you can tweak the system to better suit whatever needs that you have. So anyway... Thanks for joining me. If you found any of this useful, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up on the video. Super does help. And uh, consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber. That's all I got for you. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.